Thank you. When I was studying for my economics AS in year 10, the teacher I had at the time once told me that the knowledge I had due to the extra reading I did on the subject didn't actually matter because no one cared about it. It is ironic, then, that I will be using this extra knowledge to denounce him and the system that he is intrinsically part of. <laughs> The major improvements in human society have nearly always been made by major changes in our lifestyles. Be it the beginning of farming, making us stay in the same place, the advent of steam power, taking people off their miserable, bleak lives, working in the fields to equally miserable and bleak lives, slaving in factories. <laughs> Change is seldom simple. However, luckily, it is quite simple to see the major revolution taking place in our society, because of the new use of computer technology. This talk is evidence of that. However, it is not just limited to just this. Instead, we see a complete re-evaluation of the social structures that we have created, because the information that they are based on, the days are gone where, they, where that information was easy to control. As a result, this enables a massive opportunity for both improvements in thought and discourse, even if it hasn't quite happened yet on places like 4chan and Tumblr, to, proper, um, and to um, properly um, change the world, as it can happen literally across the world. And armed with this new information, we can now change the power structures of our system, evaluate what we do, and empower the individual. Just check out the Arab Spring. However, for me at least, there is one aspect that has not really changed, and that place is education. Why do, why do I say that, you may ask? Well, I shall explain. Change does not happen automatically when, with technology. Rather, the system itself must be reformed to accommodate this new technology. The cotton weaver during the Industrial Revolution did not just get a spinning jenny and the progress stop there. No, he built a factory, changing the methods of production and thus massively increasing productivity. You do not practice medieval siege warfare with Apache helicopters. So, I'm not going to... The way our education system was set up was by the Education Act of 1870, and the format hasn't really changed from that factory-like layout then, with the teacher forcibly instructing some variety of information onto, onto a large amount of students. This system may have been suitable for a time where the human brain and voice, possibly armed with some ink and paper, was the most easiest and cost-effective way to disseminate information. This was a time where the productivity of labour was so low, you didn't actually need that much knowledge in the first place. And also, the productivity of teachers was so low, rote learning was possibly the only viable option. Okay. Option. I'm not going to lie and say that our system is like the Dickensian nightmare it was back then. However, it contains enough elements of it to, full, to fully stop the full impact of technological progress on, our, on this system. The power dynamic envisioned by this system is inherently flawed for the current state of technology because it does not allow for the flexibility and individuality of how we work to be incorporated, which IT systems incorporate into our technology. In the few instances technology has actually been used, it has more to do with propping up the current system rather than changing it and increasing productivity that way. I mean, I like smart boards, I do, but is there really any point to them except they break more than chalkboards? <laughs> so, the results of this are quite simple. Despite the endless fanfare of improving results and endless government initiatives on education, 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 the Britons of my generation are, according to an OECD survey, worse educated than their parents. Another way to look upon this is that roughly only about 50% of students get the benchmark A star to C grades, that, including English and maths, that our government considers necessary. This means that slightly under half of all students leave mandatory education without the basic training the government expects and has paid something near the tune of five grand a year for. <sighs> Sorry. 
I think the view of society can even push my point further. I mean, is it really a view of success of your system if it is your teenage years are considered some of the most difficult times in people's lives where bullying, um, skiving, and even a potential of violence are considered part of the norm? This, this shouldn't happen, and it is repeated across the world because of the system. I would like to say partially it may be because the system is psychologically flawed. I mean, modern education came into existence even before psychology was actually thought of as a mainstream and distinct subject. Take, for example, the concept of deindividualization. Put into a system where students are taught in large classes and are often liable to be treated as statistics in a world of complex targets and numbers, it is not surprising that students lose their individuality and become part of the crowd. No, it is not that at all. And also, there is also anonymity granted by this. The combination of this and the psychological implications mean that students are far more likely to see themselves interconnected with the system rather than develop their own sense of self. This also leads to a crowd and herd behaviour. Yeah, and the students' view of their self-esteem and what they do is going to be intrinsically linked to the social norm and how they relate to it. Um, sorry, I would like to um, my point even further by suggesting that because of this anonymity and because of the things, it creates social acts and cultures that will generally be considered bizarre. In the theory of deindividualization, you can either do pro-social good or anti-social bad acts, depending on which way you are pushed. It is not surprising, then, that in our current system, where with immense hormonal and psychological changes taking part in the teen's mind, especially during the notorious secondary school and the pressure of exams, that people generally resort to the bad. This may explain the institutional bullying, the absurdity of the social structure, and just the general horribleness of school, which is so brilliantly summed up in Mean Girls. I tried to joke <laughs> about that, but it is actually quite true. So, yes, so... Um, there is another problem with education in this way, and, and that is um, with the teachers. Now, the power dynamic envisioned by it is that we have people to keep the system under control. Make leech, they shall not want. Maketh them lie down in green pastures, leadeth them beside the waters. This is what we have teachers for. But sadly, teachers are not immune to the toxic psychology of modern education or the toxic psychology of being human in general. This, this, and this toxic psychology can generally be expressed by the fact that the power dynamic means that they are the sole people with the sole responsibility of their education and bearing the rules, which generally exceeds the teacher's superiority in both knowledge and, as the philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau noted, their ability to physically coerce people. Um, with, this theory, with this theory, then, the results are also quite easy to see. It means that your educational experience is entirely based on your teacher and how good your teacher is. Not, and personally, I do not even believe that the best teacher, and I know I consider my father to be one, could actively manage and perfect the lives of all 30 students he has under his command at any one time. It is stupid. And that is only if there is a good teacher. If there is a bad teacher, or just clearly someone the student does not get along with, that can be toxic. I was home ed for a bit, as you've probably heard, because I'm a Brighton lot, apparently, and not autistic. Um, <laughs> um, um, the, um, the, and I knew many people who had to leave school not because they were unfit for it, but mainly because the only person they confided in because of bullying was their teacher, and he was bad because they did nothing. And likewise, if, if there is, if the teacher does not get on well with the student and engages them, akin to providing them a function in their class, the student may choose another function, be it the biggest bully, the, the biggest underachiever, or more, or more normally, the cool underachieving slacker, as we see in Little B here. <laughs> so... I guess you're wondering, what was my experience at school? How did I relate to it? You know, what happened to me? Or maybe you just want something slightly less pretentious than the spear line shouting. In that case, case I'll inform you no longer. I have Asperger's syndrome. In that case, it means that I am not a hipster, as, as previously suggested, but instead academically gifted in some regards, but socially incompetent. This is not a great quality for school. 
As a result, I sp spent a large point of my time having a quite chaotic education. I was educated in state primary up to the age of seven, where then my learning difficulties or developmental disorder, or whatever you call it, got in the way. And thanks to bullying by the students and the staff, I went to a, had to leave and went to a Buddhist school, which by all accounts was actually a very nice and small centered place. I entered it uh, by all accounts as a socially oblivious nervous wreck and ended it as a full, strong 11 year old ready to take on the world. <laughs> in all my manliness. <laughs> yes, but I, in fact, did so well that um, I got a scholarship to a prestigious private school, which is actually quite near here. These schools pride themselves on the fact that they can make the current system work. I do not dispute that, but I would just like to add it is quite inefficient that you have to use selective entry and pay 50 to 75% of the median income to make the current school system work. It's a bit oblivious, to be honest. However, I do have one main concern with the private system, and that is they are 30 years behind the rest of education in their academia and how they base their education on. It was possible to get a good education in 1983. However, it is difficult if you have anything that presents a slight challenge to how it, the norms of education and how it works. As a result, with my Asperger's, it wasn't a great combination. I finally got diagnosed while I was there, but they didn't actually do anything until it was far too late to try and help the situation. I'm, it may be the integral egoism and pride of many of our private schools making them think that your, their opinion is better than yours on your subjective experience, or it may just be the fact they were too cared of being Times Independent School of the Year 2011 to 2012, which you'll see everywhere on their buses and stuff, to actually care about the general welfare of its students. It's probably because of this I do not believe, like Michael Gove thinks, that private schools are the main option for our system, and we should style our schools like them. So... I haven't finished yet, don't worry. Um, <laughs> um, may I, in this case, I would um, like to add, my story does not end like some tragic epic. It, the end is not tragic. It, it's far too common to be epic. And, and so, in this case, I, we're lucky that in this city we have an institution that helps students who cannot fit into a mainstream school for whatever reason from all backgrounds. It is from here I would like to give my personal thanks to Professor Ian Cunningham, who is sitting somewhere over there, who does a ridiculously large amount to help safeguard the future of the children in this city and um, that the council has given up upon. He saved my educational life from an abyss and he saved the lives of m many other people, even to the extent of, regard of talking about some amateur who writes blogs on the internet and recommending me for a TED talk. <laughs> I have based lots of my suggestions for improving education on this system that is prevalent in the SMLC. They try generally to get the best out of the individual student. It works as by some kind of timetabling mechanism. You fill in your own timetables, booking appointments with the teachers, for example, on subjects like maths or English, who are individual tutors, and then you may do independent study for other things. But it is mostly catered towards who you are. I, for mostly because of my autistic stereotype, sat in the corner, did a hell of a lot of work, and ended up getting 8A stars at IGCSE afterwards, which was, which was quite good. However, for other people who um, did um, either distance learning courses or stuff off the internet or, or other teachers, teachers, that also worked for them too. I, the psychological implications of this is that the school being quite small and cooperative means that the, the individualization effect which poisons our education is partially removed and the more cooperative atmosphere, for example, they set their decisions in whole school community meetings is often considered, um, well, quite, um, often means that there's cooperative atmosphere and that the teachers are not so overbearing over the students and you're left to sort out your own problems. There I am. But um, <laughs> it is bits like... <laughs> in problems. So, um, um, there are limitations though. The school is quite small um, because of just the way it works and the fact that um, the council don't like it that much. And also um, because, uh, as, uh, as you know, it often works also as a therapeutic environment for people who have been terribly bullied at school as well as an academic place. They're so saying that we did have the highest A star rate of any city, of any school in this city, with about 40% A stars because I took for large amounts of the exams. I said modestly. <laughs> <laughs> You shouldn't applaud me for being an arrogant jerk. It isn't right. <laughs> so, yes. Um, so, um, the way and the format I have come up with for reforming education has come up 
mostly due to the power of innovation. I went to a tech conference as part of this school with a friend of mine, and here we decided to come up with a software called Eduball. Actually, it was more like bluffing. I was talking to some students from St. Paul's who were even posher than I am, and, um, I was, uh, um, and we were trying to convince them that we'd actually thought of some software on the train and weren't just joking about an Eduball that shoots lasers and educates people, like something out of some insane Japanese sci-fi. So and with this, we first started to look at the problems that it goes around normal schools. For example, the timetable is quite fixed, and the feedback between the teacher and the students is often jarred. So in that regard, we started talking about allowing students to input their data on the subjects that they are finding difficult into the school system, and, and so the school could learn their feedback, set up more vision sessions, and possibly even slightly alter the timetable if there was a massive problem. Likewise, we also talked about making people more independent in their study, so for example, using video conferencing to revise, and also, um, please don't forget, um, uh, using one-to-one -one tooth time just over Skype or general things because it saves time. We then started to look outside the curriculum and the schools, and then we got into the things of like MOOCs, which are mobile online education courses like this. That's actually video conferencing, sorry. There's a MOOC. But, um, and so we could use these as almost like an independent study for lots of students who may not you know, learn that much in class or want to tailor their own education to themselves. And so, um, in that regard, it would also leave the teachers either to upload their own MOOCs, as we might convert it into a college or a school format, or maybe even as, and having more time, because lots of their students are doing the basic stuff on their own, to go and sort out individual students with their own problems. And so, and so um, we also talk about, since we're not limited to college anymore, there might be talk about to just have an education system outside the school where we can also link up with other colleges and people can also choose their teachers and the stuff they want to do because the over MOOCs, so they can tailor their conversation, or what teacher they really want to see who suits their own view. And so um, we began to thought about this and linking up with other colleges and came to the realisation that the colleges with the best departments in certain things could specialise in certain departments, often like universities do, enabling a higher quality of education for all. Cool. So by this and by stripping out large amounts of the inflexibility in our school and increasing the consumer sovereignty on part of the student, we might be able to allow the individual to have the education that they feel like they want and they deserve. I'm, of course, I'm not saying we destroy the entire structure in an anarchic state. You know, I assume basic pass rates would exist, though hopefully more people will get past them. And I assume that there will still be some kind of the benefits derived by um, the collective nature of learning. But however, I envision a system where the education system works for you and does not make you necessarily a slave to the education system just to get the grades that they want to manufacture you into some kind of societal mass. That is not how it should work. I believe almost in, in a system which the individual wants to serve themselves, not for us to serve it. I hope I've convinced you of that. But I would just quite like to finish by saying that the way we view adolescence is often quite wrong in our society, I feel. We are not some prototypes, you know, desperately trying to still figure it out, guided by the ever-present gaze of adults. No, it is not like that at all. We are not, as lots of teen fix suggest, or shoujo anime, or shows, that these melancholic creatures desperate for the redeeming power of love and senpai noticing you. No, it is... It is not that at all. We are lost in this world like you. We are trying to make a better path for ourselves and those we care about. And even if we do fail, like you, we will need the support and help, help to recover from that, even if we do need it slightly more than with you. And thank you.